<laughs> Hello and welcome. I see Carrie Martin and Scout watching from Washington, D.C. Hello, Amira. Let's build from Florida. Margaret, Malcolm in Maine. Aurora in California. Shane from Texas. Annika in Tampa. It is good to see you all here. We are looking forward to our final quiz show, and I saw several people saying, oh man, it's the last class, but not to worry because Biology 2 will start in January. Did they study, though? That's the real question, Science they Mom. They did. It, they are ready to defeat you, Math Dad. Unbeatable Science Kids here for a win today. I have drawn questions from across the entire course, so if you didn't study, then we'll see about that. Let's begin. Let's head over to itempool.com slash sciencemom slash live. And we'll start off with the question, which of these diseases are zoonotic? So they infect multiple species. Influenza, smallpox, COVID, or measles. Only select the ones that are not that are zoonotic, so that you'll find them in multiple species. And hello to Jackie in Wisconsin, and Kiara, <laughs> K Katie, musical marmoset. There's the link in the chat, and we're ready to go. Okay, I'm seeing two bars a little longer than the others. You might notice a nice pretty lake behind us today. It's a cold morning here on the lake. It is, but not as cold as it. I was seeing in the chat. We've got some, some viewers up in Alaska and Minnesota. It's much colder there than it, it is cold here. cold just thinking about that. Ooh, okay. look at that. I'm, I'm betting that there are two diseases that are zoonotic. Let's find out. And the correct answer, influenza yes. and COVID. If those are both viruses that can infect multiple species, and whereas smallpox and measles only infect humans. And one of the big consequences of that was that it would be super difficult to wipe out influenza and COVID, whereas smallpox we have wiped out, and measles could theoretically be wiped out. Yep. Okay, I have a challenge for Science Mom here. Oh boy. Anna and Benjamin sub submitted some art here, and your challenge, Science Mom, is to identify the microbe. Okay, so the, Anna, I think, I think this is COVID that Anna drew, and then Benjamin's drawing. I'm going to guess a type of yeast, a fungus is budding, maybe? Okay, and <gasps> I was you, you were correct on Anna, but you were... Bubonic plague, excellent. Yes. Great choice of disease organisms. Okay. By all means. See if you can guess it before Science Mom does. Up next, question, select each true statement about vitamin C. A lack of vitamin C will lead to scurvy. The body only needs vitamin C if it is deficient in vitamin D. Lemons have more vitamin C than any other food, and dogs make their own vitamin C so they don't need it from their diet. Mark each statement that is true. Don't mark statements that are false. I think we're unanimous here just about math dad there are two answers that are correct maybe but are they the correct answers that they're picking? they definitely are because these are the unbeatable science kids and i forgot to give them a point for that first question there's going to be another one coming right up we'll see about that okay and correct answer is woohoo well, well done so Good job, everybody. Lack of vitamin C causes scurvy, and yeah, dogs, cats, 
they don't need vitamin C from their diet because they act vitamin C from their diet because they actually make their own. They they make it themselves. Okay. So up next we have Emily and George. Ooh, I love this artwork. Yeah, and Emily used purple so you can kind of see a little bit of reflection a through a little bit of your hair. I think. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with malaria so, for George and for Emily's pathogen. I'm says you, you take the eggs. Uh, I'm guessing salmonella. Okay. Because salmonella is often found in eggs. Woohoo! You got both of them right. I am impressed, Science Mom. Must the mean that I've got some good artwork. Great artwork there. Very nice. Who invent or who discovered that? technique of variolation. Was it Edward Jenner, Jonas Salk, John Smith, or was variolation used thousands of years ago in China? And I have to say with the artwork, we have loved seeing all your submissions, but for displaying them, when we have the text in, it, they're just, they become really small and kind of hard to read. So Math Dad zoomed in on the pictures. Well, also it gave away the answer. So I had to kind of crop that out and I've Science Mom, you've only seen about half of these because I keep hiding them from your email. Half. I've seen less than half. He, like, yeah, he was moving them into the, the slide presentation as quick as he could, so there are only a couple that I've seen. Hmm. What we're going to see next is who knows the discoverer of the variolation We have a technique. clear winner. Another point for the Unbeatable Science Kids coming right up, Math Dad. Let's go ahead and reveal. You can't give them their point yet. You have to wait until you I, see that I'm, they get it I'm wrong. I'm waiting. I'm just ready. That's right. Learn patience, science mom. Okay. Oops. Right here. Correct answer is that this is a technique that's been known to many cultures anciently, which was really cool that they figured this out. It is. And remember, variolation is different from vaccination. So typically we call, um, if you take cowpox and use that. We call that a vaccination. comes from the Latin word for vacca, which means cow, but it's quite similar to the idea of variolation, where you would take scabs from someone who had smallpox and then try and inoculate with a, a less dangerous dose. And it was practiced in Africa, the Middle East, and China for hundreds of years before it was practiced in America and Europe. All right. Harry and, hello, <laughs> Harry and Liam made some microbes here. What is it we're looking at in these most wanted posters? Ooh, I love these drawings. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, since I know Liam's is a fungus, I'm going to guess valley fever because that's one of the few fungal infections that I remember off the top of my head. And for Harry's, oh, help me out in the chat, you guys. I'm going to guess um, anthrax. Ooh. And... Ooh, ah, was... Zika. Excellent choice. Yeah, some of them chose really intriguing diseases that I don't know much about, so I was glad to learn <laughs> by reading. Elizabeth says it's math dad fever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which, diseases below, sorry, which disease below is the most deadly once you have contracted it? We got measles, COVID-19, rabies, smallpox. So we're basically asking which has the highest mortality rate, because the mortality rate is the, the risk of death once you've actually been infected. And this will be the, the first one they miss. I don't think so, Math Dad. I think we can... No, this, one, this, one's, this one's a pretty easy question, and we can see that that bar is overwhelmingly... They're just going to make them feel bad by calling it easy, and now they're going <laughs> to miss it. You shouldn't no, do that, Science Mom. They know it. You got, you know this, <laughs> you all know this one. I'm seeing it in the chat as well. Let's go ahead and finish all right. and reveal the answer. And rabies is correct. Rabies is by far the disease with the highest mortality rate. It is really close to 100%, but the good news is it can be treated. If you are exposed to a wild animal that may have rabies, if you get the rabies vaccine, then your chance of survival is close to 100%. I thought they'd miss it because we talked a lot about smallpox and that one is so awful. Yeah, but rabies is very memorable. Logan and Nicholas. Ooh, we have a bacteria. Logan, I'm gonna guess that that bacteria is E. coli or it could be salmonella, but I'm gonna guess E. coli. And Nicholas, I love this artwork. Oh no, and it's wanted. <laughs> I think it's a virus. I'm going to guess COVID. And cholera. Ooh, cholera. 
Yeah, cholera was a good choice. It is, and I love the water around it too because cholera was often contaminated water and drinking water. Yeah. Good job there, Nicholas and Logan. Next we have, what diseases could be effectively treated with antibiotics? Only choose diseases that can be treated with antibiotics, and so don't choose diseases which could not be treated with antibiotics. Influenza, staph infection, malaria, and athlete's foot are the available options. We've been talking a lot about antibiotics, but I'm not sure if we even mentioned all those diseases. But if they've been working on their most wanted posters and looking at that list in the appendix, they would have seen all of these. <laughs> Oh, pretty close bars there. Ooh, this could be the one. Let's Build says the pictures are epic. They are. We have loved seeing all of the artwork. Yeah. It's been super fun. Right. And, but not, and not just the artwork. Some really good research went into yeah. these as well. So several of the submissions that were turned in, I learned new things about diseases that I hadn't known before, which was awesome. Okay. There I, is think, a, I think there's a winner. There is a clear winner. But, well... If there's only one answer, there's a winner. I don't know, science mom. Oh, get ready to give me my point. Staphylococcus is a bacteria, so it can be treated with antibiotics. But influenza is a virus. Antibiotics aren't going to do, do it for influenza. And then malaria is actually a protist or a parasite. It is not a bacteria, and the word antibiotics is specific to bacteria. An athlete's foot is a fungus. Oh, so only bacteria can be taken out by antibiotics. Good job. Score is currently 5 to 0, Math Dad. <clears throat> All right. Sophie and Addie, what are we seeing here, Science Mom? Oh, the protist, I think, is going to be Giardia. That is my guess, because that is an illness caused by a protist. And for Addie, I'm going to guess influenza. If it's not influenza, it's definitely some type of virus, because that is very viral looking. Yeah. Those are my guesses. And the correct right? answers. Oh, the brain-eating amoeba. <laughs> Nucleary flowery, I think is how it said. Excellent choice and very terrifying. And Addie's was a virus, but it was not influenza. It, it was, was COVID. COVID. So, ho, ho. Excellent choice there, Sophie. Okay. Select each true statement. Both plants and animals perform cellular respiration. Glucose is required to perform cellular respiration. Cellular respiration produces oxygen, and cellular respiration harnesses light energy. Mm. It's like four true or false questions all in one. It's to give them extra chance to miss it, science mom. That's what this is. So I have a question about the art submissions. Was COVID the most common virus? Like if I see something round with like dots on it, should I always guess COVID? I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you because that would be a hint, science mom. Are you saying you need hints? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very much enjoying seeing the artwork, especially because most of it is completely new to me. I hadn't seen it before. Oh, man. Okay, we got them bunched up. Can't tell if they're... Just looking at the bars, you can't tell. Is there, are there three correct answers? Four correct answers? Think about photosynthesis and respiration. Think about what you learned. Not enough. It's all coming crashing down now. No, they remember. I believe in you, unbeatable science kids. Don't let me down. Let's finish and reveal. Yes. Oh, I got him. That was a little bit closer. Remember, photosynthesis produces oxygen. Cellular respiration does not. Cellular respiration produces carbon dioxide. And that's what we do, right? We breathe in oxygen and right. we breathe out CO2. And um, we also don't use sunlight. Okay. Sam and Noah. Oh, I love this. <laughs> so I'm going to guess Noah's is Lyme disease because I see that excellent bullseye rash and the tick there. So caused by Borrelia borgdorferi. And Sam, ooh, we've got some great details here. <laughs> I, think, I think this is another drawing of Lyme disease because it's a very long, thin, but it could also be Ebola. They both have a similar, very long shape. So your guess is? Oh, my guess is... <laughs> oh, it's hard to pick. Help me out, everybody. My guess is Ebola. 
Okay, and the correct answer is yes. Ebola and Lyme disease. My goodness. I, okay, I, I am. Great job, Sam and Noah, and I'm especially pleased that I guessed right. I, I'm pretty impressed. Loved, <laughs> loved the details about the enzymes and the proteins in the virus. That was helpful. Yeah. So at home, if you're doing as well as science mom, then kudos. <sighs> Which disease below is the most contagious? Smallpox, mumps, flu, polio, measles. Select the one that is most contagious. Yeah, certainly they are all contagious, but one of them is more contagious than the others. I saw a few people asking, where is Science Puppy? And he is right over here taking a nap. <laughs> Such a happy little guy. I am seeing one bar outpace the others. Okay. It's kind of cool that I can just hide here. I'm seeing the correct answer in the chat, but I'm also seeing incorrect answers in the chat. I'm really curious which one's going to be on top. Yes. Me another, another point for the Unbeatable Science kid. kids. Measles is much more contagious than polio or smallpox. Polio and smallpox are both very contagious, but measles is more than twice as much as they are. Okay, Luke and Isabel submitted theirs. Ooh, fabulous artwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, so definitely a virus for Isabel and sponge-like body. Interesting. <laughs> okay, for, for Luke, I'm going to guess salmonella, which has lots of flagella. Okay. For Isabel, I'm going to guess COVID. And? Am I right? Half right. Ooh. Okay, so... Luke's uh, Idionella sacanesis, or however you pronounce it, is actually a plastic eating bacteria. <gasps> oh, that's so awesome. So it's most wanted in the sense that like we actually want that one. That's right. Luke's submissions were desirable options that we really do want. So I, I thought that was a clever interpretation and I love Isabel's artwork. Nice. Nice. That's fabulous. <laughs> the person Credited with developing the first polio vaccine is James Lind, Edward Jenner, Jonas Salk, or Alexander Fleming. Mm. Who do we give credit for the first, first polio vaccine? Select the correct answer. They don't give me credit for it. I know that much. Nope. Huh. Really grateful for the vac polio vaccine, though. Yeah. And, yeah, pol polio is not something that's been on my radar because where we grew up and it, I, it was largely eliminated before I know I, was born. I know two people who had polio who are polio survivors and both of them um, now that they're in their golden years and older they're having post polio syndrome because the virus doesn't doesn't really go away and that causes mm -hmm. nerve damage that then will flare up when when you get into your elder years all right, let's go ahead and finish and reveal. I seem less confident on this one. No, I... I, I think I've got them. I'm, I'm confident they got it right. Oh, no! <laughs> one point for Math Dad. This one was a little bit more challenging because we didn't spend a lot of time focusing on this, but Alexander Fleming is the scientist we most recently talked about with the discovery of the first antibiotic. Jonas Salk, discovery of the polio, polio. vaccine. Edward Jenner. That was who was involved with cowpox and the development of the first vaccine for smallpox. Mm -hmm. And then James Lind um, was studying scurvy and did, he's often given credit with the first clinical trial, but he didn't really realize what he'd discovered when he ran his study. Okay, ooh, Grant and Emily. What are we seeing here? <laughs> I love these drawings. Emily, I'm going to guess that this is COVID. And Grant, I'm going to guess um, a bacteria. Let's say that it's Staphylococcus. It has a nice round shape. <laughs> Defeatable math, Dad. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, didn't recognize your own husband, but I, I, you really made me laugh, Grant. And Emily's was actually influenza, but, ah, but look at those beautiful colors, that shape. That's fabulous. Very nice. 
What is the name of the artery that takes blood from the heart to the rest of the body? Is it the vena cava, the ventricle, the pulmonary artery, or the aorta? Pick the correct term. This is going back to our human physiology section. And we did not have time to, to cover everything in detail that we've covered in this course. But if this question, you hear it and you think, oh my goodness, I have no idea. It might be good to go back to the notes and just read through the notes in the human physiology section and remind yourself of the things we learned about the circulatory system, about the respiratory system, mm -hmm. and the digestive system, because we learned some pretty cool facts. We did. The, the jugular, that, that one's in your neck, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a vein or an artery? What do you think? It's an artery. Be artery? I believe that the artery in the neck is called the jugular, but I'm not 100% sure. I would have to look that one up. Oh, okay. Well, then. She doesn't know everything. Nope, I don't. <laughs> okay, we, we do have a leading contender here with 37 votes, although it's dropping. Dropping. Okay. And... Aorta is correct, but the most common answer was pulmonary artery. And the pulmonary artery goes to the lungs. So it goes from the heart to the lungs. The aorta goes from the heart to the rest of the body. Another point for Math Dad. But oh. is Math Dad in the lead? Oh, no, he is not. I just got to remind you that. Uh, you might have forgotten a few points, though. I, it... <laughs> no, I did not. And Rachel has a great question I want to answer real fast. Okay. How come nobody talks about antivirals? Because there are antibiotics, but there are also antivirals, drugs that specifically target viruses. Hmm. Um, we didn't cover them in this class, partly because they're, they're newer and the way that they work isn't as clear. Like there's not, it's not as easy to explain as with antibiotics. Are they more of a general purpose antivirus? They, they target the DNA. They usually target the, the way that the virus invades the cell or the way that the virus replicates. Um, they, okay. Yeah, they're really useful, and some of them work really well, especially there are a couple against the flu that will really help if you come down with a bad case of the flu. So, Up next, we have Ali and Alora. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, I'm going to guess that Alora's drawing is of a virus, either the influenza or COVID. I'm going to go with COVID for that one. Ali, oh, let's see, it says reward... Free dose of antibiotic. Um, I'm going to go with cholera for mm. for Allie. That's a oh salmonella. But you, so you were correct though on the COVID. Yep, and I was correct that it was a bacteria for Allie. Great job with these. Yep. Loving the artwork. What are the products of photosynthesis? Glucose, water, sunlight, carbon dioxide, oxygen. Hmm. Select the products. Remember, not the inputs, not the things that are required, just the things that are produced. And Carrie asks, what's the favorite course out of all the courses we've taught? Oh. This is a good question. So I'll answer this and then you get to answer it, Math Dad. So we've taught a chemistry course, an earth science course, and then biology. And then we also did our quarantine series, which was... Um, sort of like a collection of different science topics. So out of those four, what's my favorite? Hmm. That's a really hard, hard question. Well, I kind of got blown up in chemistry with a little accident, so I'm not going to say chemistry. I'm nope. going to say earth science. <laughs> I was actually thinking about saying earth science too, just because that was the first time I put together notes and it was so exciting to be like, aha, these are the types of notes I want to make. Um, I liked those notes better than the chemistry notes that I made. But I also really like biology. I kind of feel like someone just asked me my favorite ice cream and I've got like four flavors of really good ice cream. I don't want to pick a favorite. Your favorite child. <laughs> you can't make me pick that. And the correct answers. Oh, did I get it wrong? Just a sec. What are the products of photosynthesis? Water and oxygen. Math Dad, you marked the wrong answer. The science kids were right. The products are glucose and oxygen. Oh, man. So uh, does that mean that they get a point and we take away one of your points? What does that mean, Math Dad? They get the point. They, they got it right. What the? Did I really? <laughs> <laughs> you really did. Even Math Dad makes mistakes. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just testing you. And they passed with flying colors. 
<laughs> Good job, everybody. And our final artwork here from Tyler. Oh, I like this one a lot. Get him! So we've got a T cell. T cells and run. I think I think this one is Ebola or Borgdorfelli. Um, yeah, the, the the one that causes Lyme disease. But I have to pick which one. You only get to choose one. <gasps> All right, Borrelia Borgdorfelli, the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. That's my guess. And it was Ebola. Oh should, dang it! Should have stuck with your first oh, guess. Close. Should have gone with my first one. <laughs> Wonderful job on the artwork, everyone. Which types of life are eukaryotic? Got fungi, protists, bacteria, animals, archaea, plants. Select the eukaryotes. Eukaryotes. Don't select the prokaryotes. Boom, 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 boom. Are you a karyote? Me no karyote. I'm a eukaryote. <gasps> oh, I just gave a hint. <laughs> okay, so I, no, I, that doesn't count. No, I get no, the point. No, that's your fault, Matthew. No, I get the point on this one. That's just the way it works. If, if science mom gives an unfair hint, then we should take our points away. William asks, what's our favorite fact about the brain-eating amoeba? <laughs> my, None of them are my favorite. That's terrifying. <laughs> actually, my favorite fact is the that it was discovered to be way more common than we originally thought once people went out and did surveys. A lot of freshwater streams, rivers, and lakes contain this, but it doesn't always get in and cause disease. Like people go swimming and are exposed to that water all the time. That's my least favorite fact. It's, <laughs> it's, somewhat, it's somewhat reassuring though, because that means that it's more than just exposure to it. It's exposure plus, I don't know, like maybe a perfect storm of conditions. Of bad luck. That yeah. allow it to get through. Okay, judging by the bars, I'm not sure what to think. And, oh, the Ooh. hint wasn't enough, science mom. So option E, archaea, is, and well, also bacteria got a lot, lot of votes. Those are the two prokaryotes. They don't have a nucleus. They're very simple cells, and they are the only prokaryotes. Everything else is in the category eukarya. That's right. And, I mean... Typically, if you really had to break it down to most of um, the largest categories, they say there's the bacteria, there's the archaea, and then eukaryotes all get lumped together. And even though I broke us apart into four other categories there. Oh. Did you give me my point? I did give you your point, so you know how... I think you might have forgotten. You have three. They're still ahead by five, Matt Dad. You're not going to catch them. <clears throat> A certain DNA strand is made up of 30% adenine... How much of the strand is guanine? Oh, I like this question. So think about it. We'll, we'll give you just a minute. Remember what pairs with adenine? In DNA, we have A pairs with? I think she's trying to give hints. Remember the pairs think... and then think about think about the percentages. Once again, I think I, I have to get the point. No, nope, no, nope, you don't have to get it's, the point. It's the only fair way. We, we wouldn't want them to feel bad if they were to manage to win today. Put an asterisk next to their victory in the, in the scoring book. I'm going to bring Science Puppy up for good luck. Come here, Cal. <laughs> Come here, puppy. Once again, we have three oh. different categories getting a lot of votes. And he's got crazy whiskers. <laughs> what have you been, been doing? Just nuzzling into your bed? Yep. He says, you can do this. It's math plus science. You got this. Oh man, I forgot. I was going to make one question, multiple choice, multiple select, and I was going to put no correct answers on it. Like select all, the, and then none of them would have been true. And then that's, if even one person voted, then I would win for that, sure. That's called cheating, math dad. It was, it was brilliant, but I forgot <laughs> to do it. And, okay, I think we do have a winner now, but it's not, not so cut and dry on the... Judging by the bars, the correct answer yes. is 20%. So, so why is that? How does this work? A always pairs with T. Adenine always pairs with thymine. And so you have 30% plus 30%. That makes up so, 60%. So, so the adenine AT. and thymine both have to make the same amount. So that's 30% yep. and 30%. So that's 60%. That leaves only 40% for the other two. For cytosine and guanine. And then it's going to be 50-50 of that. 40% because they're always in pairs. Yep, split Yay! 40% in half. 
Good job, unbeatable science kids. You figured it out. What type of plant is a pine tree? Is it an angiosperm, a gymnosperm, a teridophyte, or a bryophyte? All right, I'm gonna put Kaladin back in his bed because he's like, I just want to go back to sleep. <laughs> Are we boring you, Kaladin? There we go. <laughs> Not interested in pine trees, apparently. Unless there's a squirrel up it, in which case he's very interested. Oh, yes. If he sees a squirrel, he goes a little crazy. It's pretty funny, but it's not. So some dogs, when they see a squirrel, they bark at the squirrel all aggressive, like they want to eat it. Kaladin is like, friend, come play. <laughs> and he makes this cute little playful, like, oh, would, would you play with me? Like, that's his reaction to yeah. a squirrel. And it's it, it doesn't bark either. It's just silent. <laughs> so, yeah, tail wagging like crazy. We have a very clear favorite okay. in their answers. Which surprises me. I didn't think everyone would remember this. So oh, I think they remember it because plants are awesome. They, they are, but even so, uh, I might, it might be good to remind everyone what <gasps> the different categories are in case they forgot. Because Angiosperms are the flowering plants. Okay. Gymnosperms include conifers and ginkgo trees. And then pteridophytes are ferns and their allies, plants that are related to ferns, and bryophytes, that's moss. Tiny, mm. tiny little plants. Bryophytes. They earned that point. Yep, they sure did. But now they have to select each true statement. Starch is a chain of glucose molecules. The scientific name for table sugar is fructose. Glucose is the primary molecule your cells use for energy. And brown sugar comes from sugar beets, while white sugar comes from sugar cane. Mm. Only select the true statements. Do not select any statements that are false. Did your mouth start watering, science mom, when I started talking about sugar? No, it didn't. And we're they're ready to secure their victory, math dad. Look at this. <laughs> I've got one more question, and 10 to 3. They're, they're, they're doing all right. I, I will concede. Okay. All four bars. Close to the same size. Don't just select all of them because not all of those statements are true. Maybe none of them are. Hmm. Mm, it's close. Oh, the suspense. Okay, let's reveal the answer. Okay, okay. <sighs> Good job, everyone. So starch is a chain of glucose molecules. That is true. The scientific name for table sugar is not fructose, it is sucrose. Sucrose is common table sugar, white sugar. And when sucrose was half it's, glucose and half fructose in a molecule where they yeah, combine? It's what's called a disaccharide. So you have two little rings that are stuck together. This is sucrose, one part is fructose, one part is glucose. And glucose is the primary molecule your cells use for energy, is true. And then last but not least, Brown sugar and white sugar can both come from either sugar beets or sugar cane. It just depends on how refined it is. So it, as it's processed, it's turned into brown sugar and then turned into white sugar. It all starts out as brown sugar, and then we and extract the molasses, the molasses. is removed, and then it's white. Yep. Okay, our final question. How long does a typical red blood cell circulate in the body? Hmm. What do you think? I think it's been a while since we talked about... Blood cells circulating. It has been. It's fun to, to just think back and ha be reminded of these different topics. And if any of these, when you see the questions, sound like, oh man, that was so long ago, I think I forgot, just go back and do a quick review. Well, I think I remember the answer to this one a little bit better just because I was surprised. And so, really. And strangely, a surprising result is often more memorable than something that you would expect. This is true. We do have a clear favorite, although there is a runner-up that also has quite a few votes. Let's go ahead and reveal the answer, Math Dad. Okay. Correct answer is 120 days. So seven days got a lot of votes, but a lot, lot longer than that. Okay. I am really pleased with what everyone has learned. We covered so many different topics and... We did. And with biology, it's a little bit of a different field of science because with chemistry and some of the physical sciences, there are very clear ways of this is what people should know and this is kind of the order it should go in. Biology is really different. It's so broad and 
encompasses so many different things. And we are, we, we enjoy teaching you so much. And we hope you guys will um, sign up for biology too as well. Join us as we go into genetics and evolution. And I owe you guys a defeat song. Math Dad was ready, the questions were strong. He knew that his students would get them all wrong. But then they surprised him for during the show. They said, we're not scared, now let's show what we know. And now that it's over, the game is all done. The unbeatable science kids won. Work hard, grow smart, and um, we will see you in our next class or on the YouTube channel in between.